Greetings folks. The maiden of the scratch built micro sky hunter went really, really well. It flies beautifully. Uh, very fast, aerobatic, efficient, great little plane. Much better than I expected. Now, uh, what can I do to improve it? It's a little bit flexy, especially the tail here and the thin elevator. So I'm going to put a, a strip of carbon fibre across the leading edge there, which will stiffen up that area. Just going to hot glue and tape that on. Uh, I found, if anything, it's nose-heavy, uh, so I can actually do with a little bit more weight on the tail. Motor is fantastic. The Air 40, whatever it is, from T-Motor with the 5 by something or other prop, 5x4 maybe, absolutely perfect for it. Pushes it along beautifully. Um, I haven't really found the right battery for it with a 3S uh, 1300. It has to be way back there with the 952S, has to be right up on the nose. Somewhere in the middle would be great. Uh, about a thousand uh, milliamp hour 3S would be perfect, I think, it's sitting right about there. I think I can afford to chop off a bit of the nose because uh, it's always tending to be nose heavy. Um, I need to secure the ESC, that's just dangling by wires. The problem is with this new covering tape that I've found, really nice thick tape but uh, it, it sort of has some sort of coating so that although the tape sticks really well to foam nothing sticks very well to the tape itself so I sort of have to wrap it with uh, scotch tape and stick things onto that so it's a few days later uh, and all my mods are done and I've been flying it and it's an absolute ripper this uh, little uh, scratch built micro sky hunter it's flying much better than I expected it would. Um, really, really nice. Uh, I'll just go through some of the mods that I've done. The most obvious thing you can see is I've curved off the uh, wing tip there for no other reason than aesthetics really, just to make it look a bit better. Still flies beautifully smoothly. Uh, I can't really detect any difference, so uh, I think these sort of wing tip things are a bit overstated sometimes. The square tip wing tip works really well. They're curved off and tapered wingtip works well as well. Uh, so I've shortened the nose as well uh, so that I can sort of get further in to put the battery back further. It tends to be too nose heavy so I need to get that 1300 battery back as far as I can. Uh, I have put that little bit strip of carbon fibre on the elevator which has stiffened that up beautifully and you can see my little FPV rig here as well. That's just a little camera sitting on, on Velcro there little transmitter up here which is just stuck onto ID card plastic and tucked under those uh, rubber bands there. Now I haven't worried about separating things from other um, components at all. You can see the ESC is down there and the video transmitter is there and there's just no interference so I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> the, the filtering in cameras and uh, little transmitters these days is very very impressive and probably the ESC as well. I don't know what ESC that is by the way, uh, it just came on what was it the little FPV 600 wing from um, T-Motor or from uh, Tech One along with the uh, fantastic Air 40 motor. Um, I also uh, deepened the fuselage here a bit, I just sliced along here and, and shoved a bit of foam in there to give me more space to fit the battery right in back in there. Um, I find the battery's butting up against this tie down rod there. Uh, that's what's restricting it, and it's, it's still restricting it really. So, ideally, smaller battery or slightly deeper fuselage. So, that's all the mods. Uh, this build uh, has generated a lot of comments and questions, so I thought I'd sort of go through some questions uh, and give you some brief answers. Someone asked me, it might have been Nathan Knight, no, it was someone else as well, asked why I swapped to different glues during the build. I started off using Yuhu Pour, which is a, a foam safe contact cement. So you put the glue on, uh, bring the two surfaces together, pull them apart, let it dry for five, ten minutes or something, then put them back together and they'll stick immediately. Um, I usually sort of, I'm pretty. I'm a pretty rough and lazy builder, so I often use hot glue as my first choice. Hot glue can be very uh, heavy if you overuse it. Uh, it's perfectly good if you, if you don't overuse it. Hot glue is good for joining odd shapes like this round tail boom to the, to the flat foam because it, it, you can use it to sort of fill in gaps and uh, it grips those odd shapes really well, whereas Yuhu Paw won't do that. That's more for 
bonding two flat surfaces to get together. So for uh, the wing and the um, formers, Yuhu Paw is probably a, a better choice. And Gorilla Glue or polyurethane glue, uh, that's the, this one's accent, same sort of stuff. Uh, that expands when it dries, so it can sort of fill in gaps as well. It has a longer drying time. So that's why I used it on the spar, uh, because I could put the spar inside the wing and it wasn't a perfect fit, so the glue would expand out and grip onto the foam and, and have a decent bond. Different glues, different situations. Um, my lazy choice usually is hot glue though. Matt Jones asked if I'd used uh, 18650 batteries. No, I haven't ever used them, uh, but they sound very, very interesting. Seem to give uh, very long flight times for lighter weight, smaller battery size. So yes, they would be interesting to try, but I haven't got around to them yet. Uh, I have to thank Mark Pickass, who was the inspiration for me to get on with this build. I promised in a, a, an earlier video a long time ago that I was going to build one of these and uh, Mark remembered and picked me up on it so thanks very much Mark. He also had some very good questions and asked was I missing the tapered and turned up tips of the original Sky Hunter. Uh, I can't say that I am. I, as I said I, I've never been able to detect a lot of difference between different uh, wingtip types. I'm sure there are but uh, they're just too subtle for me to, to pick up really. Um, so the, the square tip is fine, the flat wing is fine. Uh, it means that uh, if you have side winds, you're not getting bucked around because of the upturned tips. Um, so I prefer flat wings usually. He also pointed out that I'd made some mistakes on the plan uh, and I'll just uh, correct them now. Uh, now the tail booms, I think I said they were 400 millimetres long. They're actually 390 millimetres, a little bit shorter. And this gap here, um, I think on that scribbled bit of paper I had that as 200 millimetres, it's actually 215 millimetres. So you can see the boom doesn't go right to the leading edge of the, of the wing, it sort of stops about uh, 10, 10 millimetres back and it does pretty well go to the right to the back of the elevator. These things are minor, they don't really make a big difference if you know a centimetre here and there isn't going to make too much difference. But thanks for picking me up on that Mark, I've uh, corrected that on my blog. Oh, there we go. Mark was the one who asked about why the different glues. Chris Gate asked about flight times. What flight time can I get on this 1300 uh, battery? I've just been out for a fly, beautiful calm weather, uh, and I could easily fly for 20 minutes, cruising around about half throttle, doing the occasional full, th full throttle run and some hot dogging. So uh, very nice and efficient long flight times, uh, 20 minutes easily. Tom Muleman Jr came up with another suggestion. He said that uh, for these dowel booms, um, I've just covered them with tape. He has in the past used heat shrink and he reckons that increases the strength quite a lot. Thanks very much, Tom, that's a good idea. Daryl Engel suggested an A-tail, which yes, I want to try an A-tail. I think they look really cool. An A-tail is like a V-tail inverted, I suppose, and works perfectly with a twin boom design. So yes, definitely want to try that. Paul Gabanski and my flying buddy Michael Downey both pointed out that my knife was very blunt and I was tearing the foam eventually. Uh, thanks for picking me up on that, I'll do that. Another flying buddy, Alan Moore, asked about uh, engine offset for pushes. And with a, when the engine is sort of in line with the fuselage like this, you really don't need much offset at all. Uh, you, you may benefit from left or right thrust angle, I'm not too sure. I, I usually don't worry about that at all and just uh, adjust it in the trim of the plane. Uh, but up or down trim, you don't really need it for this design. If the motor is mounted up high, you do need to point the thrust angle down a little bit uh, to stop the plane being pushed over all the time. Good question, Alan. Uh, and David Davids, who seems like a very passionate designer, uh, has told me all the things that I've done wrong. He says the control horns are not correct and they're not correctly installed. All I can say is that I think they are. I think they're perfect. They work. They, uh, with the materials I had available, with the design of the uh, aileron that I've got, that's sort of the only place I could put them. If you put the control horns further back away from the hinge line, when they're bottom mounted, they actually give you some uh, mechanical differential, which means the other one goes down less than it goes up, which is good. It reduces adverse yaw. So having the control horn back away from the hinge line, if that's what you're worried about, David, I'm not too sure. Uh, it's actually a good thing in this situation. Uh, he also said my tail boom should be tapered towards the tail. Uh, 
No, that would just make them weaker. Uh, it wouldn't be strong enough and it would probably reduce the tail weight, which is not what I want. I actually need a little bit more tail weight. He also said the aileron should extend right further out towards the tip. Well, that's another option, I suppose, but I've got uh, plenty of roll rate. Um, and I think a clean tip probably reduces tip stalling tendencies too. But this plane has virtually no tip stalling tendencies anyway. Oh, I just saw something else I've done. I've put a little bit of reinforcing here where the rubber bands are passing over the foam, just a little bit of ID card plastic front and back just to spread the load of the rubber bands across the, the foam there. Uh, David also said that the wing profile is too thin. No, it's not. It's absolutely perfect. 10% is exactly what I was going for. 10% is my favourite wing profile. Good combination of speed, still has enough lift, very efficient. So I'm sticking with 10% David, it uh, works beautifully. And Wes H asked if it's going to be the maiden flight or the maiden crash, and of course there's only one answer to that. I'm going to turn the camera off immediately, right now, because I want to go and have a look at the footage. <laughs> <laughs>